The Human Atmosphere, or The Aura Made Visible by the Aid of Chemical Screens, by Walter Kilner, is a book published in 1911 that explores the concept of the human aura and presents Kilner's experiments and observations related to this phenomenon. Kilner begins by explaining the idea of the aura, which he defines as an invisible energy field surrounding individuals. According to Kilner, the aura reflects a person's physical and mental state, manifesting as colorful and patterned energy. He believes that by studying the aura, one can gain insights into a person's overall well-being. To investigate the aura, Kilner develops a method using chemical screens called dissonant dye, which are colored pieces of glass. He claims that these screens, when placed in front of a person's eyes, enhance the ability to perceive and analyze the aura. Kilner argues that the screens act as filters, allowing the observer to see different layers and colors of the aura that are not normally visible to the naked eye. While Kilner's work gained popularity among spiritual and metaphysical communities, it faced skepticism from the scientific establishment. Of course, the scientific consensus today does not support the existence of the human aura as described by Kilner and similar proponents. In the book, Kilner presents numerous case studies and observations of individuals using his chemical screens. He reports seeing various phenomena related to the aura, such as color changes based on health, emotions, and thoughts. Kilner also describes the expansion and contraction of the aura, which he suggests corresponds to fluctuations in energy levels. Additionally, he claims to have observed etheric doubles, faint outlines of a person's physical body. Kilner goes on to discuss how certain diseases affect the aura, proposing that changes in the aura could potentially serve as early indicators of illness. He suggests that by monitoring the aura, one could detect health issues before they fully manifest in the body. Furthermore, Kilner suggests that some individuals possess a more vibrant and visible aura naturally, while others have a weaker presence. He even proposes that certain people have the innate ability to perceive auras without the aid of chemical screens, referring to them as naturals. However, for a very brief period of time, back around 2010, the public could buy the Dissonin version, but no more. Dissonin is a blue dye. It is not a drug. It is not physically dangerous. It is not poison. However, you cannot buy it. The chemical company that makes Dissonin assigns a security code to its customers. To see how high Dissonin is classified, we ask a government chemist if he could order some. His security code allowed him to buy everything he wanted, but when he requested Dissonin dye, he was told he was not cleared high enough to obtain it. Dissonin dye has special properties. If you make a window using two panes of glass with Dissonin dye between and look into it, you can see the astral world directly. Now, if you are a psychic or meditation student, you can see the astral world too, but this die allows anyone to see it. Now you see why it has a higher security rating than anything else. If people could buy this simple die freely available in the 1940s, they could prove to themselves and anyone else the existence of another plane of reality. Private researchers used dissonant die before the government locked it away in the 1940s. This gives an approximation of the time when the decisions were being made to censor all available knowledge, so that new generations could be programmed into a belief system that was manufactured by the government, and which had no relation to true reality. And now, if it were possible to offer definite physical, reproducible proof of the existence of the human aura, there would be a revolution in scientific thinking about our own nature, the nature of the universe, and our place within it. Not only that, as if that weren't enough, there would be vast areas of research and understanding open to us that are now closed. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end, to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. Every day, our world is getting spookier, you know. 
most of us just want to live our lives in peace, minding our own business, but unfortunately, the control freaks in charge just can't resist meddling. They won't be satisfied until they can watch our every move, track our every word, and control everything we do. That's why they're all gung-ho about introducing central bank digital currencies all over the Western world. These digital currencies will give them even more power to control our finances. And now, the UN has rolled out a new tool that makes it even easier for them to censor what we post online. The UN's new fact-checking system is going to be a game-changer, but so far, the mainstream media is being really quiet about it. Perhaps that is because they don't want millions of us to object to this sort of tyranny. The UN developed iVerify in conjunction with big tech companies and Soros-funded organizations, and it will be used to crack down on disinformation and hate speech all over the world. The United Nations has unveiled an automated fact-checking service to counter so-called disinformation and hate speech on the Internet, in a project partnered with big tech and Soros-funded organizations. In response to what they brand as online information pollution, which they claim is a global challenge, the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, has launched its iVerify platform to counter alleged disinformation and hate speech online. The global body's automated fact-checking tool was developed in partnership with the United Nations International Computing Center, UNICC, Facebook and Google-funded fact-checker Meetin, the Meta-owned CrowdTangle, and the Soros-funded International Fact-Checking Network, IFCN. Needless to say, this tool will not be used to crack down on points of view that Big Tech and George Soros agree with. Instead, it will be used to crack down on those that choose to be independent thinkers, and that should greatly alarm all of us. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.